What are the best NSFW life hacks? Fingering is not an in and out motion. You are not simulating a penis with your finger. Insert, press up into the bumpy surface on the roof of the vagina, and drag out while maintaining pressure. For normal people it can be thought of as a come hither motion. For edit nerds think using a mouse scroll wheel, only upside down. If you can't reach something on a high shelf at the office, just stand on a rolling chair. Women want guys to be present during sex. Make noise, let her know you're enjoying her body. You don't have to jack her or her twat to turn her on, just show her passion and excitement. Women are more turned on by the experience than the jackhammer. No one and I mean no one likes giving a guy head and him be hella silent. You're not hiding from your mom anymore, we're whole adults. Get loud and tell us how good our head is, or how we can do better. If you keep firm pressure on the clit after orgasm, there is a percentage of, of women that will have one or a series of smaller, yet very enjoyable, climaxes from that pressure. Don't rub, just gentle pressure. Thinking of receiving anal in a few minutes and douching beforehand? Wetter is not better. If you use too much water, and it gets into your colon, it's coming back out in a few minutes with force. Stop when you just start to feel pressure. Guys, don't be afraid to make your orgasm loud and obvious. It's unbelievably hot when you don't hold back. One time my wife was giving me a blowjob, and I had a flashback of a porno I watched a while ago. Right when I came I screamed a drop in loads. Cum came out of her nose from the sudden intense laughter this caused her. Ten tenths so were drop loads again. Farts will come out quicker and smoother if you're laying on your left side. Has to do with how your bowels are situated. This is a godsend in bed at night during the two days leading up to my period. If you're on your way down to perform oral on a chick and realize too late that the smell is going to kill you, but you've already committed and backing out is going to be a problem or isn't lost. Spread your fingers wide, like you're throwing the peace sign to a hippie, slide your thumb into the vagina, press your palm firmly over it, sealing the unpleasant odor in. Now you can lick her clit between your peace sign fingers with no odor. Speed does not equal pleasure. Start slow and methodical and slowly go faster. Don't just rely on your dick either. Whisper in her ear, kiss her neck. Kiss from her neck to her pussy and once you get down there really give it to her and tell her how much you love her body and how good she makes you feel, or bad if that's what you're into. Also when eating pussy don't just lick. Curl your tongue and do little circles. When licking her clit, put one hand on her mons pubis area and gently press upward to pull her skin and labia taut. This exposes the clit and adds to sensitivity. My ex did this all the time, until I caught on, and made it part of our thing. Current partner approves. Get her off, before you even start. Make sure she has an orgasm, and a good one at that, before your dick goes anywhere near that. Why? Well for one, if she gets off every time she's going to enjoy sex with you more, and will want to have it more, so that's a win for you. But more importantly as a life hack the difference between how it feels for you is night and day when she's 100% revved up. Sex after she's gotten off compared to just when she's horny is like comparing a Thanksgiving feast to a PB&J sandwich. They'll both do the job, but the turkey and stuffing is so much better. Forget putting a towel on the bed. Use a wrestling mat for sex. Wrestling mats are specifically built to handle to sweaty people grunting and pounding each other. The mats provide better support for sex than a bed does, and they are definitely a lot easier to clean. Some tips. Make sure to clean the mat before and after every use. Don't get a red mat otherwise it may be difficult to see what to clean if you're into blood play or period sex. Lubricant will make some mats very slippery, so I wouldn't recommend trying to stand on the mat after you've done the diddly do. You'll want to crawl or roll off and wipe your feet carefully. To be extra cautious, look up J.I. Ujitsu videos for instructions on how to protect yourself while falling. Speaking of lube, you'll want to apply a little bit to the mat to avoid mat burn. Explain to your partner ahead of time that when you're super excited you occasionally let a fart slip out. Then reassure them that it doesn't happen that often, only once or twice ever. Then you can rip ass whenever you want, and they won't get mad, because they'll think they're the world's greatest lover. 
when with girls, involve yourself with your partner, don't get pressured by your own mind into overthinking what they want. For example, I remember the first time I ever fingered my, now ex, gf she told me I look really bored, when I did it. That stuck with me, and I realized I was sacrificing my own pleasure, by thinking exclusively of my partner, and not both of us, which in turn, was making me less involved, and making the experience war for both of us. Learn techniques if you like, but best to just relax and communicate clearly. With guys, less experienced, took a while to think of some good advice. Responding to their needs is key, but these needs may be strong slash overwhelming. It's always okay and often helpful to slow down, pause and try to gain balance over what they like slash you like, and to what intensity. Maybe even beforehand, and separate from the act, work out your compatibility. If you can't seem to ejaculate during oral sex, try getting up into a position where you can thrust your hips. Naturally, this can lead to gagging, so have her prop herself up on elbows facing the edge of the bed. You stand facing her. She adjusts so that when your thighs hit the mattress, you have bottomed out and can't penetrate any deeper than that. If you have a partner who rarely initiates, drop into conversation that something very simple and publicly accessible turns you on, even if it doesn't. For example I get really turned on when the tops of my knees are caressed. If your partner starts doing it, you know you're likely on. It's an easy way to get them to communicate that they're horny, even if they're too shy to fully initiate. I don't know that I've ever seen this one mentioned before, so here you go. Guys, if you feel directly above your junk you'll notice there's a fleshy v-shaped structure there. When she wants you to go harder, angle your hips to hit her clit with that. That's the sensation she's usually after, plus you don't have to worry about accidentally ramming her cervix, a very unpleasant sensation, from what I've observed. If you're behind her, time your thrusts, so your balls swing forward for the same effect. As a corollary, lightly tapping her clit during foreplay can be a new and surprisingly stimulating experience for her. Edit, it's important to note that the most important thing you can do in the bedroom is to pay attention and read your partner to see if she enjoys what you're doing with this and with any other technique. When in doubt just ask. A woman's body has pain receptors spread out over their whole body, they have twice as many as men too. These receptors also register pleasure. A sensual massage might make you calm down mate, but do it right to a woman. That's her version of foreplay. Don't be so focused on genitalia and boobs that you forget the rest of the body, especially the legs, the back, the shoulder and even the stomach. This is more advice than life hack. As for a life hack, this is for you guys, but it works for you to ladies. On your first time with someone, it's alright to ask what they want, just word it correctly. Like what do I need to do to make you feel good? As an example, it's simple, but it's all about what you can do for someone else. It's alright to ask for help in making someone else feel good. No one will take it bad, only if you keep asking. It's all about you taking an interest in them and their pleasure. Play with yourself. Learn what you like and share it with your partner. Even if it's super weird, but you enjoy it, your partner is going to enjoy doing it to you. A little bit of embarrassment, sometimes even a law will enhance the pleasure and bring you closer together. Get freaky, be weird together. Have those secrets that you can think, oh if only everyone else knew what we did behind closed doors. You really want to get a woman excited, then you need to tease her for a bit. Whisper in her ear. Tell her all the things you're going to do. Then make her wait. Let it linger. Make her watch as you run your hand along the length of the shaft, stopping at the tip. Then firmly grip the base of that brush and scrub the hell out of that toilet. When going down on a chick. Don't just flick your tongue in and out, you're not a lizard. Actually put some passion into it, eat her pussy, like it's the best tasting thing you've had all day. Slowly trace over the outer lips, suck the clit, yes I said suck the clit, and not like you're drinking from a straw. If your tongue has some flexibility to it cup your tongue, when you're licking inside her. Don't be afraid to communicate and experiment. I'll add to this is an ass slash intestine specialist you to having many surgeries in my gastrointestinal tract. When this happens it is very likely that you have small internal hematoids that have swollen up when they are near the end of your rectum the swollen up veins prevent the anus from fully closing 
and you can keep cleaning, but crap keeps going down, because the anus can't close itself. I suggest the following. A high fiber diet when this happens, so your shit becomes more solid and stops being liquid, so it cannot pass even when there are small openings. Taking a warm bath with salt water. Be careful, if you cleaned yourself too many times you can give yourself a macro fissures in which case the salt will make it sting. If it keeps happening often then you might want to talk to your doctor for medication against hematoids. When fingering a woman, just the old in and out doesn't do the trick. Prior to properly trimming and smoothing your fingernails, you measure this by running the nails on your face. If you flinch or wince, more filing is needed. Before, use the same taps around her clit as you would use on a pepper shaker, or working a telegraph. Once the taps start sounding wet, start slowly swirling around the chosen finger, mine's the middle finger, until it's wet. Turn it around, so that the fingernail is down and slowly get that boy in. Make sure you're up the top of her vagina, work it in and out, while rubbing the top. Your other hand should be caressing around the clit. Once your lady's love engine is properly looped up, beckon with your finger, flex it, touch, prod and jab at the top of her vagina, where her clitoris is placed. This is the Grafenberg or G spot. Stay with the in and out, and do one or two tippity taps at the top of the inside of her vagina on every in. When your lover's lady folds clench around your finger and her voice drops several octaves, you'll know you've given her a vaginal orgasm, and if her first indelible memories. Men make her come once, before she even gets to see your dick. This is huge. Do you want to be renowned as a good lover? Do you want to receive booty calls? Want girls coming to your place, bringing dinner and maybe a bottle? Want her daydreaming about you? Learn how to curl their toes. Make her come, before she gets to see your dick, especially the first time. If she isn't soaked, you're half-stepping. No macho bullcrap here, learn how. Ask questions and experiment with a lover you're comfortable with. This is a skill, that you have to learn. Using your hands well on your female, will enrich your life. If she is sharing herself with you, earn it. Being lazy and greedy about sex is just stupid, short-sighted and ultimately emasculating. When dealing drugs, don't take extra risks, ever. This applies on both the supply and dealing end. If you feel like the guy who supplies you is being pushy or too demanding, don't feel weird about making up an excuse as to why you need to leave. If you feel like a customer might possibly be trying to rip you off, it isn't worth it. You can find another customer. Always be ready and willing to drop dealing drugs at any time, for anything, and have a backup plan for safety. Even low-level drug dealers are not always safe, even with nice clients and nice dealers supplying them. All it takes is one snitch telling someone you have drugs for you to get your ass kicked and robbed, or maybe worse. Dealing drugs can be extremely rewarding, in that you make a lot of money for a relatively low amount of work. But the risks associated with it are insanely high, and getting caught slipping up just once can have disastrous consequences. Alright guys I'm a little late to the post here, but I hope people get to see it cause it's a mind blower for women, that love spot stimulation. When you're fingering a woman, get the spot and rub in circles. Now match where your finger is on the outside, push your fingers together. Now you're hitting the spot from both sides rubbing opposite directions, same direction, or just keep pressure, do what she responds to, but I guarantee, that it will be some of the most intense orgasms you could ever give your woman. Remember to listen to her body. I've done this to multiple women and most of them respond with body convulsions, shaking, insane amount of moaning, and multiple orgasms. There was one that much preferred clitoral stimulation as internal was super intense for her, so I couldn't do it to her long before it start to hurt. Remember everyone is different. Have conversations about sex with your partner outside of sexy time. Sit them down and say hey, let's talk about what each of us likes during sex. I want to make sure it's as enjoyable as possible for both of us. Talk about likes, dislikes, kinks, limits, fantasies, things you want to try, anything. This is good for two reasons. One, it facilitates learning about each other. And two, it makes communication in the moment way easier. For some people, it can be hard to suggest things, or say they don't like something that's happening in the middle of the act. It can be anxiety inducing and a real mood killer, if it's not handled well. Having talked about things beforehand removes a lot of the pressure. 
you know the person won't be offended or confused or unwilling if you suggest something since you already talked about it. And you know they won't take it personally if you say something isn't working since they already showed they can take criticism and are willing to work on making sex better especially if you already talked about that specific thing. Plus, this is where kinks and such come out. People aren't as likely to ask for something non-vanilla during sex. If you talk about it beforehand, you can plan to try different things and fulfill one another's fantasies that you may never even know about otherwise. Happy sexing. Like and subscribe for more edit videos.